Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to United View. Good morning. Happy 2nd of April. Hope you guys are doing well. We've got the latest rumours, the latest reports, the latest goings on at Manchester United in the lead up to a big week, man. Two back-to-back -back games that are absolutely massive. One on Thursday against Chelsea and, of course, the big, big one at Old Trafford on Sunday as we face Liverpool again. So, so much to get into. And this morning, it's all about Jason Wilcox agreeing to come to Manchester United. He struck up a deal with Manchester United. So he's our guy. It's a done deal. He's in. But Southampton are fuming and they want more money. That's not quite the deal yet. That's not quite the deal yet. So yeah. we're going to talk about that as well because, um, you know, there's a lot of journalists and a lot of big outlets who've had a lot to say on this with some really, really strong pieces that give us a good insight. But there are well, also some caveats to it. There are also, there is also the side from Southampton um, about why this deal isn't quite done yet, but looks like it definitely will be done. We're going to be talking about Onana as well. Just getting peppered. Just getting peppered. Just, just yeah, he's facing a lot of shots, isn't he? But he's also at the top of the league for like stop, shot stops, yeah. which is yeah. uh, no surprise. And he's, great, right. and he's not even a great shot stopper. That's not even his and game. He's not, <laughs> it's not even his game. He's not top four, you know, long balls or, you know, whatever distribution he's top for shot stopping which who would have thought that in december and november and october maybe we're yeah. going through that awful champions league run who would have thought yeah. um and we want to talk a little bit about um jeremy fringpon as well of um leverkusen because there's some interest there plettenberg said some stuff today as well so or yesterday shall i say so let's get into this wilcox thing because again in terms of the structure and ineos's revolution yes. it was uh quite big news yesterday and rolling into today because there's more updates Yes, it was very interesting stuff. We kind of touched on it because it was happening when we were doing the full view late last night. Um, but some interesting stuff about Jason Wilcox, particularly that United seemingly, the timeline events is they'd made an approach to Southampton and Southampton weren't happy about the approach. So Jason Wilcox basically said, screw this, then I'm going to resign. So the news last night was from Fabrizio Romano saying that Jason Wilcox had resigned from Southampton and he set to uh, join Manchester United as the new technical director. Now, Southampton, as I mentioned, when it comes to this compensation stuff, which we'll get into more in depth in just a second, have refused to accept a fee. So Wilcox resigned as he wanted to join the Manchester United project. Uh, the former Manchester City head of academy will be a key part of Man United's new era. Now, Romano had to kind of like quote tweet this because whilst this was all going on last night, another story emerged suggesting that Liverpool had made an approach for Jason Wilcox as well. And they had agreed compensation with Southampton. So there was this whole, oh my goodness me, is uh, Liverpool hijacking this deal as they look to implement, as they look to put in their new hierarchy, their new structure with several key people leaving this summer uh, from Anfield. And Fabrizio Romano stressed that the only club for Jason Wilcox is Manchester United. He has agreed terms with Man United and wants to be part of the Ineos project. Agreement with Manchester United confirmed. Now, must be stressed, that's an agreement between Wilcox and United, not United and Southampton, because this is when we get into the sort of frustration on the Saints part. So according to uh, Paul Hurst from The Times, saying that Southampton are ready to insist Jason Wilcox serves his 12-month notice period unless Manchester United increase their offer. Where have we heard that one before, Flex? Sounds very Ashworth-like, doesn't it? Um, and the reason why is because Southampton are unhappy with Manchester United making an official approach for Jason Wilcox during a key part of the season. They believe that United's approach for Wilcox could have a damaging impact on their chances of getting over the line to get back into the Premier League next season. But Ben Jacobs released this really long um, tweet last night, kind of going into a, a really long, uh, a very in-depth. He said that Southampton are looking for a fee significantly in excess of 12 months' salary if Jason Wilcox is to join Manchester United without a year-long wait. This is down to losing Wilcox at a crucial part of the season and disruption caused to their summer plans. Southampton only gave Manchester United permission to speak to Wilcox on these terms, yet Manchester United's formal offer fell short. Continues by saying Manchester United, though, argue their offer of 12 month salary and compensation was fair, given Wilcox had only been at Southampton for nine months. Again, it's very similar to the Dan Ashworth situation. But Southampton are adamant Manchester United had agreed in writing to offer a higher compensation package than spoke to Wilcox before putting forward a lower number. So they're sort of saying, well, you're reneging on an agreement we previously had. Um, the Saints are really unhappy about this and disagree with Manchester United's position that the approach was respectful. 
Wilcox is now set to work out his 12-month notice unless Manchester United increase their offer. Manchester United still hope for an amicable resolution and to avoid a long wait, but Southampton will stick to their position unless compensation in excess of 12-month salary is paid. Wilcox has already indicated he wants to join United as technical director. So, Flex, I've got a couple of things, actually, with this. A couple of questions to ask you on this one. And, Mike, one, one, well, Flex is muted as well. He's, he's muted. He's, you know, technology. Um, I was just, Richard Romano tweeted him like 15 seconds ago as well. Oh, what um, did he say? And he says, no negotiations or talks taking place between Jason Wilcox and Liverpool, as reported yesterday. Wilcox has agreed to join Manchester United as new technical director, ready to be part of Ineos' project. It's just about when. No talks planned with other clubs. So he is. it's only Manchester United, which is basically what Owen just said. Yes. Um, a, a couple of things. Um, do we do we have to be slightly worried in the sense of two negotiations, Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox, and we're basically at the same situation with both, which is a bit of an impasse of the other club not being particularly happy with the way that Manchester United have operated and two clubs that are pissed off and are like, right, right so you, then you'll set out, do your garden and leave. 12 months. 12 months, yeah. Do we have to be well, worried about that? <clears throat> Business posturing, man. Business posturing. It's like if you go buy a house or if you go buy a car or if you go to an auction, want to buy something, you know, the, the situation between a buyer and a seller, especially in football, is um is an interesting is an interesting relationship. And the, the bargaining of skills of the seller or the buyer determine who gets the best deal, or is it about right for both? Sometimes the buyer could be so good, it's like bloody hell, how did you get this item or this building or this deal? For that price, you've done amazing. Sometimes the seller could be so good that it's like, tell you what, to flog that for that price in this condition or under these circumstances, um, you're an amazing salesman. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's just, it's just business. I think it's just business. I think also you have to remember in football that the people who make these decisions, they also want to make sure they do right by their clubs, slash their fan bases, and come across right as well. So if if Southampton just, you know, roll over, you know, they are, they're not going to get automatic promotion. That's going to be beyond them, but because it's so tight between Leicester, Leeds and Ipswich, they're not going to get automatic promotion. But what they're saying is, is, you know, we're, they're going to be in the playoffs and should they go up or even if they stay down, you know, Jason Wilcox is a massive part of what that looks like for them. Yeah, the summer the, planning. The summer it's already planning. started. Yeah. It's already started. But the idea so, that we would cause them not to like... Oh, we, it's, it's our fault they don't get promoted. No, of course that's not. nonsense, of course not. isn't it? That's, that's that what I'm saying. Nonsense. That's the posturing. But again, they have to be seen to be showing up a, a certain type of guard as the smaller club as well, that are not just going to be pushed over because Big Man United are coming and nicking your players or your technical director or whatever, because, you know, they are Southampton, they're their own fan base and they're their own club. So I get it, but that's why I'm not too worried about it because essentially, again, this is even more so than Newcastle's case when the money comes into it. The guy's resigned. He's gone. Like, there's nothing they can do to stop it. Nothing. Well, well, Are they going to let him Dan stay Ashworth. there for 12 months Someone and pay Dan someone Ashworth. else? Dan Ashworth's Go gone, for a summer not having anyone? Yeah, Dan Ashworth's gone. Do you know what I mean? These people are gone. They want Man United. It's over. So they can dig their heels in and cut their nose off to spite their face. But essentially, like Jim Ratcliffe said, what are they going to do? You know, he's going to call He's gonna, He's going to call them out, really. All right, call, call the bluff, sorry. All right, cool. I'll just wait. I'll play a bit of a waiting game. I might up the bid by a million or two here, but I certainly ain't paying the astronomical fee that you want. And you're going to have to buckle on that because what are you going to do? Just have no technical director for a year? No sporting director for a year at Newcastle? What? What? Pay them money and let them... Plus, you've got to find a new guy for your summer. You see, if, if, it's, if it's Newcastle, just moving on to Ashworth a little bit. You know, the, the, the future of Eddie Howe's up in the air. You might have to sell one big player or there's a lot going on. Do you, you want to keep just paying him? Southampton, if you do stay in the championship, what do you want to do? Budget's not as big. Well, you're going to keep paying Jason Wilcox for a year? I'll wait. So it's posturing. They'll find a deal. All of them will find a deal. It's a combination of a couple of things, isn't it? It's, um, of course, both 
uh, Newcastle and Southampton, of course, they're going to be ha- unhappy because these are senior people. This isn't like, you know, your, your left wing back you're buying, isn't it? You know, these are like director of football, sporting directors in charge of their recruitment uh, recruitment network already laid the foundation for what they're going to do for next summer, the summer after the summer after that. Like when they joined these respective clubs, there was a long-term plan in place and they're seeing these long-term plans go puff up and smoke. So you can understand the anger from that point of view. And, um, and like you say, it's like that kind of, that sort of business kind of thing where you go, I've got you. And you, I know you can't do anything because like, these guys are gone. Dan asked for some garden leave. Jason Wilcox has resigned. And we both, we all know that eh, maybe they might sit somewhere for three months, six months, but they're gone. They're not coming back. And you've got to figure it out. And that gets a, um, that gets people's backs up. I mean, from Southampton's point of view, if, 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 and if, this is when we get into the, the weird territory, isn't it? If they believe that Manchester United had agreed, like, to pay, this certain compensation package, <laughs> then they went, okay, cool. If you've got to pay that, we'll let you talk to Jason Wilcox, figure it out. And then they go, here's our compensation offer. And it is significantly lower. I would be pissed off with that. <laughs> Cause I, cause I'd be like, we just said something completely different to us. Like, but, exactly. and again, and, and then, that and then that's when it goes back into the business side of it. Cause from Man United's point of view, they, they know, well, it doesn't matter because we've already agreed the deal and this guy's off. And this guy wants to become um, the Man United technical director. So, I think, look, I, I think a lot of it is going to be sour grapes because when they, they hired these respective people, like, for instance, Newcastle's one in particular, isn't it, is that Dan Ashworth was seen when he was brought in anyway as sort of a real key figure in this new Newcastle era. And what, a year in, 18 months, he's off to go to the bigger club. That pisses them off. Southampton, when they hired Jason Wilcox from Manchester City, who was the head of the academy, it was a bit of a coup for them because they thought, well, I'll say we've, that, given him, coup, that. We've, we've given him a you know promotion to the director of football, but well, yeah, he's got a really good reputation. And then the big bad evil Manchester United come in and go, We're having him. And they go, Oh, because this is this guy was part of our plan for to reestablish ourselves back as a Premier League club, and we were going to do this and all that kind of stuff. And now suddenly that changes. Of course, it's going to be pissed off. And then you know, Manchester United possibly play games a little bit when it comes to the compensation. Um, I just want, and I know these things don't get done quickly and you do have to have an element of patience, but you do, you do just want to get them to get over the line a bit. I, I don't mean, I'd love to know what the figure is for the compensation part, because the Dan Ashworth one, I think, most fans are behind or uh, unified in the sense of, well, don't give them 20 million because that's ridiculous. You know, that's that's crazy. This one, it'd be interesting to know what that figure is because if it isn't that much, then you'd get into the territory of just pay it. Like, let's, let, 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 we, we do need people, we do need, we do, we do need this structure in place and not have two parts of it <laughs> not available for a year. Like, it's one thing to have one, like a Dan Ashraf, you go, look, there's nothing we can really do. The guy's really good. We're willing to wait. If you imagine we've got two of them, they go, so what changes have you made? You go, we brought in Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox. Are they here yet? No, not until next year. No, no, mm. yeah, they're both they're, they're both waiting. But it is, but it does show that this when you want to nick these types of people from football clubs, it is difficult because, like you said, you, you said it's perfectly, it's like it's not it's a player, it's not it's a left wing back where it's like, oh, we've we've got the guys who know how to get the re- next replacement for him. That's how we even got this left back that everybody wants to buy anyway. Like these people are the real geniuses at football clubs. These are the these are the real reasons why teams are run properly, or we see great players at football clubs, or we see a production line, we see consistency in transfers. It's these sorts of people, and it's these sorts of people that have been missing at Man United for so long, which is why I think that attention to detail and the, 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 you've got to remember. Our club has been run so bad and there's been such bad financial decisions made. I can, on, on to, to play devil's advocate for the other side, because you're right, we don't want to be, we don't want to hear about Glazonomics ever again of scrimping and scramping over an extra two million to get something done. We've seen it for years. However, what we also don't want is money being thrown at things not in the right way or overpaying or not being able to negotiate properly. Having a little bit of weight at the table is what we want. We want a little bit of arrogance at that table to say, no, 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 we're in EOS. This is how we negotiate. 
we ain't paying that for him. What? Yeah. Bring it down. Like, I, yeah. I kind of like that. And we have to, like you said, we're not going to get these things done quick because of the types of people that we're, we're trying to poach. These are yeah. really good people at their jobs. Like, people mm-hmm. say, yeah, is that Southampton? No. Wilcox's um, CV is long. <laughs> like, you know, it, like, like Cohen said, it was a big coup for Southampton to even get him. Really, you'd think he'd be operating in a high-level Premier League club already anyway Yeah. after that. Um, and the fact that these guys have down tools at their respective clubs, so be it respectfully, you know, you've handed in your notice, you're allowed to do that, you're allowed to resign. Mm. It's not against the rule. Yeah, yeah. It's the law. People are acting mm. like these guys have just gone to work for Man United on a slide. No, they haven't. They've yeah. fought, followed a process and said, there's another opportunity, here's my notice. Yeah. Um, the when fact you, that when you get a contract that, in the first place, it's, it's written in. It's written into it's a written in. You know, well, yeah. you know, for this which reason. Why, yeah, which is why if we don't pay the money for these guys, they will have to serve a minimum of X or a minimum of Y, which is what we don't want because it's a long time. So the protection's there to protect the employer, but it's also there to protect the employee. Um, and I don't, where I do agree with you that you, I would, yeah, because if we knew the figures would be like, oh, come on, just pay the extra million or two. But I've kind of got faith, you know, I've got faith that, they're doing this for the right reasons and they're there because also you have to think about it. I want us to start as we mean to go on. I want it to be gone of the days that somebody just says the price and we just pay it. I know it can sound pedantic and I know there has to be a cut off point because it can't get mm. silly. Yeah. But no, there does need to be. If these are the guys who are doing our negotiations, I do want them to haggle a bit and get the best deal from us because that would, again, symbolize something different than what we've been doing, which is getting the flipping pants pulled down. And flipping, just paying out whatever someone asks you to. Back in the day, if this was bloody, you know, uh, the likes of Richard Arnold trying to sort this out and get a new technical, do this whole thing, because you think what would be paying? Well, people wouldn't even pick up the phone. People wouldn't want to come. Well, but we, but, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even mean? have that conversation. We'd go, who's around the club that can do it? Exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? We wouldn't Darren be Fletcher's going external. Good in his technical director thing. <laughs> yeah. Let's take him out of the current and stuff with Eric. Let's put him yeah. in a suit. And now let's let him do what John Murtaugh's doing, because John yeah, Murtaugh's yeah. leaving. That's Let what, him that's do what the deal. So I, I like, yeah. I like it. I'm not too concerned yet. I'm not. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying because I, I mentioned this before that um, one of the biggest challenges Ineos has, and this was more for the summer, for the transfer window in the summer, is that changing that reputation of when you do get over the, you know, to the negotiation table. We've seen over the last decade, like I said, it, the negotiations have been Man United go, we want to pay this, and then the other club, the Salon Club, goes, we want you to pay this, and, they, and we go, okay. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's how it. that's that's how it works. And it may seem, and this goes back to why I think you know Newcastle and Southampton are angry because they know United have got them. Like they know United have them. The only thing yeah. that they have at their sort of their leverage is they have these notice periods. That's the only thing they've got. United realise they go. We've already got the person. They're, they've resigned. We've got Dan Ashworth. We've got Jason Wilcox. They're coming in. We've already, you know, agreed the t- the terms really of what they're going to be um, working on and their outline and the project. They all they all know that. The only thing that we've uh, that they've got is a notice period. And their thing is to half that to eliminate that. You're going to have to pay us X amount. But from Man United's point of view, again, their leverage goes back to so what? So you're going to all right, well, so what if we don't pay any compensation? You're saying you're going to pay him for 12 months? Or in yeah. Newcastle's case, 18 months? Is that what you're going to do? Call him out. Because yeah. we know you're not. Call it Because yeah. <laughs> we know you're not going to do that. And then it just became becomes a game of chicken, doesn't it? Where they just keep, the longer it goes on, the longer it goes on. Like Newcastle is the best example, because I do think Man United legitimately, I'll just go, let's just wait to the end of the season. Let's see what position yeah. you're in at the end of the season. Because yeah. we know you need money. We know that you need money. And also you need someone coming in to help figure out that kind of financial picture that you've got yourself in because of FFP. So they'll just wait. Southampton, it might be a similar one where United just go, let's just see if you do right, get you promoted. Didn't, you didn't go up. Yeah, yeah you didn't go up now. Or, or if you do get promoted, they'll be like, you really need a big summer, don't you? It'd be a shame if you're you know, director of football sitting on the sidelines all summer. You know, that. and to your point, maybe that's why you do have to have an element, element of patience because once you get closer to big checkpoints, i.e. the end of the season, summer yeah. transfer window, we we would ideally want them in place to help out ours, but we know we've got someone in Omar Barada who's going to do it. So they're like, well, we're confident. And I do think Sir Jim and Ineos, their kind of viewpoint on it might have been skewed by how easy the Omar Barada negotiations were because by all accounts, City really didn't put that much of a fight up, really. They were just like, oh, you want to leave? Cool. Then 
you know, put you on garden and leave. He's going to become the CEO. Like they can't, it's difficult to stand in someone's way when they're like, I'm going to become the CEO of Manchester United. Like it's a massive job. I'm so that's another job. And because look, City, it's like the same with players and I suppose the same with executives. They're confident enough. Well, okay, cool. We'll find someone else. It's, it's not a problem. Whereas, you know, with Newcastle and uh, Southampton, I suppose it's a bit different. But Sir Jim said it in that interview he did when he was talking about Dan Ashworth. He said, we spoke with Man City. They were very courteous and they yeah, were, they were easy to work with. no problem. So he probably looks at that and goes, oh, why can't the rest be like that? You know, exactly. if, the, if the guy wants to leave, there's not a lot you can really do. It will be done. Exactly. The problem is if you're trying to convince someone to get out. Yeah, exactly. Then it's, then it's then it's even harder. Then you've got to yeah. offer more money than they're on, and well, we'll offer them more money anyway. But you know, you've got to increase the package. You've got to entice them, in, in, incentivize the bonuses. You have to mm. really sell it if you really want to get the person. But if it's an easy thing of like that person is one hundred percent committed to leaving their post and come to you, you've yeah. now got the upper hand. You've got the upper hand. Yeah. I've got so I've got something. You've you've got someone who doesn't want to be there. Yeah. It's, it's well, the same these, reason why we're in, in a cases, bad situation with Sancho. And in these cases, they're not even technically there anymore. I mean, they're yes, still getting paid because they're on garden yeah. leave. Or, but they've left. They're, they're not coming they're back. They're not coming back. He's not. <laughs> Dan Ashworth ain't gonna go right after. I've enjoyed that garden and leave. Right. Yeah. Saudi PA. Right. What are we doing now? What are we doing with Isak? What's going yeah, on yeah, now? Exactly. Let me get, let me get back to work. It's not gonna happen. Jason Wilk, Jacob gone. Wilcox isn't going right. So. Yeah, I know there was some craziness, but let's sort out the summer for the Premier League if we get promoted. And he resigned. <laughs> he's got yeah, gone. I don't want to wait. He's gone, yeah. he's <laughs> I'm not working here back. anymore. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got nearly a thousand people watching live, 136 likes, which is actually our fault because right at the start of the show, we didn't really remind you guys for 250 base point. Let's mm -hmm. get 250 in the bag. Do not be disgraces and cheats. Nearly a thousand of you watching, you can do it very, very quickly. Um, like Owen says, turn your phone where the like button can appear. Um, yeah. Get it, get it going, um, or just take the time out to, to smash the like button. You can, you can easily do that. That would be great for the channel. We'd really appreciate it. Um, VK been a member for twenty one months. Big up to you, VK. Says, be kind to yourself and others. Always smash that like. And Aminor says, I hail. <laughs> it's a rallying cry to Nubian Pharaoh. Aminor says, I hail Nubian Pharaoh to grace us with his presence. Um, and WJ Barrett. Uh, says Ineos are making moves. We want to change now, but a couple of garden garden leaves um, after waiting years for change ain't massive. If they was dead, uh, we would have them in now. Best in class means waiting for notice. Yeah, looking at it from like you know these are these are these are top guys to get. You can't just go and get them and win a week. You just unveil them as new signings. It's it's a lot bigger than that, especially at this level of um, you know employment. At this level of you know job description, it ain't easy. It ain't it ain't like just signing players. Like people are literally yeah. signing over their whole pr whole you know five Bam. to ten years worth yeah. of strategy. Yeah, you know, yeah, literally yeah. Eddie Howe sat in the presser and went, Yeah, you know, are we a bit annoyed that he knows certain things that we were planning? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's the that's the <laughs> yes. difference, isn't it? Because it's not like it's not like signing a player in that respect. If they don't no. have, I mean, they might have the, if you sign a player, there's maybe some things they can say, well, actually, when I played for Newcastle, this is our tactics. You know, you could say something like that. But mm. I mean, these are like intimates. These are the players they're going for. This is the long term strategy. Oh, you know, they, they're actually scouting this player in this league. I don't, you didn't need to, you not know about that player. Go check out this yeah. player. And then you can and get the it. networks. And be, listen, they've got a really good thing in contacts. South America. Yeah. You know, they can, get over there to Ecuador. Yeah. You just set up yeah. this thing. You know, you, yeah. It, it's oh, there's crazy. A, there's, a, there's a guy that they, they only go to over in South America and you should talk to him. <laughs> yeah. He's a guy. Like, again, and, and that can Fair be the stuff. difference. And that can be the difference between winning a trophy that can be the difference between qualifying for the champions league that'd be the difference between winning the league the difference um, and between spending an extra 30 million on someone exactly or not. exactly we could be an extra we could be an extra player and today brailsford always talks about marginal gains that's little marginal gains you know gains you're talking about so that that's why it's kind of you know it's it's intimate inside knowledge that you wouldn't get anywhere else and um and then on top of that, you're getting their expertise. You're getting, you know, what they're what they're great at, their negotiation tactics too. So yeah, yeah. so of course people are gonna be angry and be upset about that. But like you said, I think Ineos is they don't really care. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. But this is gonna be my other question to you. Do you think it will have any impact on uh, Eric Ten Hag this? Because the reports, you know, he 
prior to the Brentford game were that, well, Ineos's focus at the moment is putting this team in place and the decision about Eric, his future is going to be made by Dan Ashworth, by uh, Jason Wilcox, by Omar Barada. So if it's going to be long before they do get in, does that give Eric more time or does it just mean, well, actually the final decision is going to be made by the guy who actually is in the door, which will be Omar Barada? It's a really good question. It's a really good question. I don't know, Owen. I don't know because to be honest, I'm like, well, they would want, they would want you, we would want any decision to be made early enough so that we can, you know, act upon it accordingly. But the truth of the matter is there's quite a lot of spinning plates here. There's quite a lot of spinning plates and Man United aren't really in control of a lot of them. You know, whenever you, how quickly you get Dan Ashworth and how quickly you get Jason Wilcox and get the Avengers assembled thing, right? It's like, it does depend on the clubs we're trying to get them from. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's just, I, I tell you what, he oh. never lets us down. <laughs> never. Bloody hell. And that was just, that you know, we didn't even, that was Aminor just on his, by himself, just said, I hail Nubian Pharaoh. And that means the Pharaoh's always watching, you know. That's what it means. Um... Get your Ferrers in the chat. Tabarez, I see you. Aminor, I see you. Andre, Kenny Fan TV. Aminor, who actually started it. Uh, yeah, I see you. Mackish, see you. Mac, everyone with the Ferrers in the chat. Joe Blackman. Oh, the Pharaoh is here. Smash a like on the video, guys, if you haven't done so already. Like Ankit says, the final boss. Yes, he definitely is the final boss. All Elite, I see you. Eb, I see you. And Bandil, I see you. Owen, over to you. You called, I am here. Final boss settings, man. Jeez. That Honestly, that is such a, bo <laughs> a boss move. Proper. Is it, you know what just, I mean? Just you called, I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's incredible, man. That's I just... think I think Nubian is such a boss that, um, do you think he does the super chats himself or do you think he goes... Just <laughs> send it to his PA. Send a... Yeah, send a super chat. <laughs> possible. It could be, yeah, very possible. 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 Very possible. An alert might have gone off on his phone in his business meetings in London say, saying, I've been summoned. And then he's just. Well, you know, he's, he's, what, he's watching. Part. He's watching. And uh, maybe he just there's someone there with like a notepad and he goes, send a, send a super chat in. Send a super chat in. And then carries on doing the big business that Nubian Pharaoh does. I yeah. think it's something like that. It's insane. It's insane. Um, big up, though. Big up to you, Nubin Ferrer, as per usual. Big up to Aminor WJ Barrett, who have sent in Super Chats today as well. And everybody else who... Um, Acknowledge me! Right. Everybody else who has sent in Super Chats um, and getting involved in the comments. Just, ma just making the community click, really. Everybody plays their part. Whether it's Nubian Ferrer doing a madness, at, you know, whether it's people in the regular chat who turn up every single day to be involved, whether it's our mods who are here every single show, whether it's our members that are here every single day, like it, every, just, it's just another reminder. When you see situations like this, it's another reminder of the whole community. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, a, it's a joke. Like what United view is like, it's crazy. When I look at it, I just think, I can't believe this is like a thing. I you. You know, we need <laughs> I to can't get... believe it. Or when we're talking about Jason Wilcox and, uh, and Dan Ashworth go do the negotiations. Yeah. Get Nubian in. Get yeah, Nubian in. get Nubian in there. He knows, he knows what Nubian. to do. He knows what yeah, to do. Exactly. Um, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do. Where are we at, Owen? 162 now? 162,563. It's right there in the top right-hand corner. Oh, yeah, there it is there. Yeah. So on the road yeah. to, I mean, I don't know what the next round number is. 165? Is that the next round number? Yeah, I mean, people, yeah, I think that would be better, in it? Because otherwise... Well, you could just you can encourage every thousand. Oh, I tell you what. Speaking of round numbers as well, mm. and I only say this as a, as a shameless plug because it's a big week for me, Flex. Very big yes. week for me. Talk uh, to us. Yes, um, I'm currently on sixteen thousand nine hundred and eighty-eight. Well, cl oh, very come close. on, wait there. Nine hundred eighty-eight. Yeah, very close. So to you seventeen k is right there. No, no, right there. Guys. It's right, it's right I, there. What's I mean, what you want? Nine hundred ninety-eight. 
988, that's what, 12? 12 right. away. Yeah, 12. Guys, I'm telling you now, even as we even as we are sitting here right now, because I, I and you should never really do this, but I don't care. I would open up another window, or if you have to leave us for like five seconds, go to Owen Wrestle News 365. Even if you don't like wrestling, I don't care. There are a thousand and fifty-five of you here. There are twelve of you that are one hundred percent not subscribed to Owen's channel. A hundred, there, there will one hundred percent be twelve of you. There is the link that Yo 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 has just put it in there to Owen's channel. Go to Owen's channel. There has to be twelve of you, and Owen will have seventeen k within the next few minutes. I guarantee you, because that's the type of community we are. No, that's the type of community we are. Well, Owen like has it know. happened yet? I'll let, oh, I'll, 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 I'll let you <laughs> is know. it going up? Get it, your live oh, counter up on your channel. Four away. Four, four away. away. Look at look four at the, look at our community. Four away. I ain't moving till it's. Done. Oh, it's done. It's done. It's, it's done. done. <laughs> That's our community. That's our community. <laughs> we, are a family. Me. we are a family. We are a family. And while you're at it, um, it doesn't have to be right right now. But whilst we're reminding you of our family. Subscribe to KG's channel. Subscribe to Minna's channel. Yeah. Um, does Rich have a channel? Yes, Bammy Rich. He does, but he doesn't yeah. do it all the time. But, you know, yeah. Rich, Bammy Rich has got his channel. Anyone associated with the channel, big them up. So, yes, we are a family. We all support each other. We all want everyone to do well. So, well done, guys. Well done. Yeah, thank um, you very much, by the way. I mean, this is this is crazy. <laughs> it's like 7530, like, immediately, like that. Mate, before Look you know, that. that's going to be... That's, you're going to be on 18K, maybe, after this, mate. <laughs> oh, WrestleMania season. You never know. Yeah, mate, let's get oh, into that round 20. Get into yeah. that round 20. WrestleMania. Um, yes, exactly. Um... What was we talking? Oh yeah, to finish off on that, um... oh, the future. Who's going to make that decision? Do you think it's be Omar Barada? Oh yeah, that was it. Because well, he's definitely. I don't think be all them there. people are going to be and there then, by the time we need well, to make the decisions. This was going to be my other thing that I was going to say to Flex is that they do have mouths, and I know in you know formally they're not meant to be talking, but if Omar Barada is going to make the call, then maybe they have an informal conversation. Hey Dan, what are you said about Eric. Oh, hey, Jason, what are you saying about Eric? So the idea of just because they're not officially in post doesn't mean that they can't have that conversation, can they, I suppose? Exactly. They're not. They're, that, so they'll make that decision. Like, that decision will then, be made. I, I think they will. I don't, because this is what I'm saying about the spinning plates. They're not going to get the chance. They're not going to get the chance to get everybody in place perfectly where they're all in harmony around this lovely table, which is what we envision. Yeah. By now, well, unless unless a madness happens, by the way, can't say it's impossible, but I very mm -hmm. much doubt it's April now that when we assume because the season finishes what May 17th, something like that. If we get to the FA Cup final, maybe the week, I think a final June, you know, June 1st is right. Round. Do you know what I mean? So, a couple of weeks after the season finishes, there's the FA Cup final, which you'd envisioned would get to, mm -hmm. but the season finishes in May, right? From May, it, it, the you know, when does the transfer window open? August the 1st. Um, it's, it's, isn't it weird? it weird? It's like, I think Not it's August, like, sir. sorry, it's going to be in July, surely. This is a madness, folks. <laughs> this is good. Oh. <laughs> oh, I gotta press the thing again. Acknowledge me, yeah. I don't, I don't even have to press this. You can do it! Because he's already done it. I'm still wondering about if, whether the assistant does it, though. But I'm still... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nubian and Farah has come through again. Farah's in the chat. Amino, Andre, Simon McGill, Joe Blackman, Lil Yo-Yo, WJ Barrett. See you all. See you all. Um, who else is there? Max, see you. Here comes the money, <laughs> says Kristen. Um insane owen and it's actually a personal tribute to you take it away i have subscribed to owen's channel my people do the same it's out of love man thank you, you subscribe you sub yeah even fairer subscribe to your channel thank you um man. yeah um and anthony says um even fairer i have two and minas as well yeah exactly and kate make well a lot of people will be on kgs already i think everyone is but yeah, share the love to everybody. Share the exactly. love to everybody. Insane. The UV Absolutely. community knows no bounds, Flex. It's everywhere. No, it does not. 
Um, yes, but to finish off on that, we've <laughs> <laughs> tried to finish for a while. <laughs> Basically, I think they will have to make decisions when everything's not set yet. Because in the ideal world, they'd want everybody around the table. But I just, I just can't see it in that short space of time. Mm. Yeah, I think they'll make they'll make the call. They'll make the decision. Yeah. Hey, they might have even made the decision already. Flex. How about that? It doesn't even matter yeah. about these the compensation and all that kind of thing uh, stuff. I think maybe it happened a while ago. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, well, do you want to do the Anana thing or the Frimpon thing? Let's do. Let's do Anana's Which what one? you got prepped, right? Well, we could. I can. I can read the Frimpon one. Yeah, you've got Karen Potten Bled. Yeah. thing there. Yeah, let's let's do <laughs> Frimpon. <laughs> What's his name? Florian Plettenberg. <laughs> Not Florentine. Was, not Florentine. Florentine. <laughs> yeah. Florentine. Um, so he has said, uh, news, Frimpong, a decision could be made by the end of April. The fact that Alonso is staying has influence on him. However, nearly all top clubs are still interested in the 23-year-old right back. About his future, he told me for Sky, quote, I just want to win trophies. I am uh, really so focused on the season and on Leverkusen. But in the future, you never know what will happen in football. Um, Bayern Munich, a possible next step. He said, quote, Bayern Munich is a great team, but I'm a player of Leverkusen, so I'm happy to be there. Uh, FC Bayern reportedly still have him on their list. Manchester United as well, and more clubs from England with a release clause in the range of 40 to 45 million euros. That is low flex. That is low for a player of his quality. We've And in fairness, this isn't like a new interest in Frimpong. We've been interested in him in a while. This, even last season, I remember seeing those links uh, to him. And then obviously this season, he's done fantastic. Um, I think a bit of a, a bit of a game changer though with that is the Jabby Alonso staying factor, isn't it? Because I think there was a kind of impression that there was going to be maybe a bit of a mass exodus this summer if he were to go, you know, with uh, Verts leaving and then possibly... Uh, Frimpong as well. But now that Jabby Alonso is staying, maybe those players might look at it and say, well, actually, maybe I'm going to stay. Maybe we're going to have a go in the Champions League next season. Maybe we are building something for the future, uh, perhaps. Um, what say you about that? I mean, that's such a low release clause. 40 really to 45 low. million Euro euros. In, listen, oh. that, and this is where, it's things like this, right? You do your due diligence. Due diligence. <laughs> I hate saying those two together. Due, due diligence. Due, do you struggle with that one? Due, due diligence. Do you know what it is? Because if I say the word due by itself, I don't go do. Yeah. You, but when you, you say... Yeah, because you don't usually say... After, yeah, yeah. You just say, you have to say do instead of due. You know what I mean? Because usually you say, right you'd say when is it due? But then yeah. when you're saying that, you go do. Due diligence. <laughs> no one's going to go, when is it due? Yeah. Maybe. Well, Americans maybe. Might. Maybe. Americans maybe. Maybe. Do. Maybe we like just don't talk properly, Flex. Americans say Tuesday. Like, yeah, you know, but doing their background research on <laughs> <laughs> on Jeremy Fringbaum, that is when you go, right, 40 to 45 million euros. What's that? Basically 35 to 40 million pounds, isn't it? Something yeah. like that, yeah. which is insane for someone as good as him. When we talk about release clauses, we saw it with Kim Min Jae last season. Oh. You know, there's a lot of things about release clauses, but with players like this, who are doing really well in the Bundesliga, it's really hard to fend off Bayern Munich. It always, always is. Especially if they're in the country, they're settled. Even if they've just beaten them. People say, what's the point? Why would you Why would you win with yeah, Leverkusen? That's what and I, was then go, say. I don't, I, no, I don't do think, see it like do you that. Think the perception has kind of, not changed, but like, if, if things Still stay as they the are, club well, I mean, Germany. I mean, but this is where I go into the Jabby Alonso factor because I would yeah. agree if Jabby Alonso was leaving, you go, right, I'll go to Bayern Munich because things are going to go back to normal yeah, next yeah. season. But if yeah. Jabby Alonso stays and they keep their players, then are things going to go back to normal well. in the Bundesliga? Yeah. Is that is that gonna is that gonna well, is it just gonna be next season? Bayern Munich, oh, suddenly Bayern Munich are back next season. They win the league by yeah. thirty points. Like, is that that's not gonna happen? No, I don't think it'd be like that. But Bayern Munich definitely aren't a club that you know these big powerhouses. People like Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Bayern Munich, because they're so used to dominating or just winning. One good thing about them clubs is they don't care how when it's when the shit hits the fan, they have a bad season or maybe a bad two seasons or it looks like it. They get in their bag and they fix shit. Well, they they they, they right. try to anyway. They thought they did last summer, didn't they? Because they, exactly. they just won the Bundesliga by Dortmund screwing up, and they went right. We're going to win the Champions League. We're getting Harry Kane, and it's yeah. just gone completely and it's gone wrong. <laughs> but then they then they ain't just going to sit on their laurels, going, "Oh, what we're we going to do?" They they will they would go will go. 
they will mm. they will work at it. Um, but yes, that's what I mean about why it's difficult for Man United to get this player because a Lever well Leverkusen are going to win the league. Got a really good chance of winning the Europa League. Probably going to come up against Liverpool. That would be a really good game to see actually. Um, so they are they've got a chance of doing that. And then someone like Jeremy Fingpom underneath Xabi Alonso, are they going to keep their team together? Everyone's expecting them to sort of have this bring and buy sale. No, like go nick all their players. Like I said, they've got us break. They're, they're German champions. They're going think, into yeah. the Champions League. I don't think that's going to happen. Like, I think now that Alonso's happen, staying. So he could just stay. Yeah. yeah. I think Alonso's but, staying, that's the key with thing. that release clause, mate, you've got to put, you've got to, you've got to try. Oh, everyone will. As will everyone no, will. Yeah, everyone will. And it's going to probably be a case of, can anyone turn his head? Or does but he in have the future, the, you never know what will happen in football. Mm, or, does he have, or does he have the same resolve as his manager? Because, you know, his, everyone wanted his manager. And it was like, no. But he, um, Jabby Alonso didn't have a release clause this summer, did he? I think that comes into effect next year, isn't it? So maybe it wasn't mm. as straightforward as this one, where it's like, hey, if you pay the release clause, it can be off. It's not even up to the club anymore. It's up to him as to what he wants to do. Um, and in the past, and maybe this is quite defeatist flex, but in the past, whenever we've had that kind of situation where it's like, oh, there's lots of clubs vying for him, for a player, because they can all play the release clause, you sort of go, well, you know, like, put it, for instance, if like Manchester City came in for Frimpong, you know, and they paid a release clause, we'd be like, well, we're going to struggle to win that one because... Where are you going to go? You know, you can come to Man United, big, biggest club in the world, or you can go to Man City and be like, wow, well, I'm going to win shit. You know, there's something that's going to happen quickly. So I don't know. And, and also on top of that, too, uh, he's an Ericton hard target, seemingly, hasn't he, for the last couple of years? What if Eric's yeah. not there? What if Eric's exactly. not there? So what if the, and, and also, we're talking about uh, Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox and Omar Barada. There, it's going to be their recruitment structure. So it's going to be up to them. Do they want Jeremy Frimpong? Really, mm. that would be yeah, the difference and they might as well. not. <laughs> they might, they, they might, might not. They might not. And yeah. system, you know, he he plays more of a, as a wing back, doesn't he, as opposed to a traditional right back. Um, depending on who the manager is going to be next season, that might yeah. be a factor too. Do we want to do what Manchester United have always done, which we buy people because we like how they look in one system, try and put them in our system, which is different, and go, why doesn't that work? <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, he's not, he's not doing what he was it has doing. Has to be part of the plan of club. what we actually want to do. Exactly. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? So yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting to see. But I mean, it's not like a, you know, Man United are just there on a long list of clubs who would be interested in a player of such good quality for such a good price. It's as simple as that. There isn't yeah. Man United bidding come in or anything like that. We're not in that. We're not in that yet. But um, I'm sure all of that's going to come as soon as the season ends and we turn our attentions towards transfers. Um, Aminor says, I swear yesterday Flex was going to hit Marcel at one point. Of course, I was never going to hit Marcel. I didn't ever feel like hitting Marcel. I've never felt like hitting Marcel. No. How, how could you? How could you? No. I don't know. How could you? No. Um, big up to Marcel. It was a really good actually, yesterday, actually. Actually, you know, and this is and this this shows you the kind of guy that Marcel is. Yeah, and I love Marcel. Yeah, yeah. particularly like I said, I, I, off camera, I can talk to him all day. And I have sometimes before. I like to sit him down and ask him questions about life because I like to hear what he has to say on lots of answers. And uh, when that subscriber thing just happened a couple of minutes ago, he immediately messaged me saying, congratulations, Owen, 17K with a fire emoji. So that's the kind of guy Marcel is. Right now he's done that. Right, literally as soon as it happened, he did, Look straight that. away. That's also the kind of guy he is. Pick up. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Listen, Marcel is one of the most clean, warm-hearted guys I've ever met exactly. in life. Not in this yeah. space, in life. life. I remember first meeting Marcel at... Ironically, at Southampton. Southampton, yeah. At Southampton, and he was with his friend, and mm. he spoke about Martial that day or something. I think he was angry. Or at I, I, I can remember that one quite vividly as well, because yeah, I was doing some editing. Really well. And he was talking about, I want to have two eights in the six, and he was doing, you know, doing this, yeah. doing this, whatever. He was Marcelin. Yeah, yeah. Big day. So, and he's and he's been part of the family ever since. So, yeah, big up to Marcel, man, always. Um, uh, the Onana situation. Before we sort of wrap up, um, I, know, <clears throat> I know that was on the agenda. And yes, actually, before well, you do that, sorry, before you do that, 326 likes. So we did get over to 250. Let's, uh, do I say 500? We've got a thousand people watching. Why not? We've had an amazing stream. Yeah. We've had an amazing stream. We've broke records on the stream already. So yeah. uh, why not try push for 500 likes? Let's see how close we get to it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, this Onana thing, because I saw you commented on this on uh, on Twitter <laughs> X yesterday. Um, yeah. And it's an interesting stat saying no goalkeeper has prevented more goals than Andre Onana, 5.01 in the Premier League this season. And I believe your quote tweet was one of sympathy saying he's getting was. peppered. He's, getting peppered. Yeah. he's trying to <laughs> defend all these shots. Um, that's kind of been one of the um, uh, sort of, uh, I don't know what's the best way to describe it, sort of a subtle story over the last several weeks, hasn't it? Which is that of all the talk about the shots that we face, it's actually been the form of Andre Onana that there is an element of sympathy for him. For instance, at the weekend, when we concede, you feel bad for him because it goes down as yet another um, clean sheet missed. But it's not for the want of trying from him, was it? No. I mean, he did everything. <laughs> did everything. And, and get, as we said earlier on, this is a goalkeeper that's... That's not meant to be what we really brought him in for, was it? Yeah, okay, you know, goalkeeping fundamentals, stop shots, but it was it was more distribution, playing up from the back, spraying balls all over the place, and now he's really doing what um, David de Gea was best known for, wasn't it? Of just keep making saves, keep making saves, you know, a, a just constant you know, barrage of shots coming up against you, make saves, make saves, make saves, and um, and even the stats are kind of proving it. They are, and he's settled down. He's, he's, his mentality has been really good because, you know, if we look back to, uh, you know, obviously I was there for every game, speaking to fans as well, had my own opinions. We've had our own opinions here on the channel. At that point, mate, it was bad because he was doing some real crazy things. And people were saying, no, it's gone down to mistake as well. He must sell him. He's got to sell him. It hasn't worked. Take him out straight away, play Tom Heaton. No. Where's Bayern Deer? For God's sake, it's just Ten Hag's stubbornness to just keep playing him. And actually, it's one of the things he deserves credit for by just sticking by his guy and saying, I know he will be fine. You know, he done, Onana done an interview with uh, Italian press. And he was like, well, how could I go from one of the best keepers that uh, was in the Champions League final last year? Well, now yeah, I'm just yeah. rubbish. He said no. And it came, you know, people who don't understand Onana can say, Oh, mate, you're throwing yeah, the ball in the back he, of the net, he mate. Like, crazy cause, stuff. Cause he says because he says crazy stuff. But you know what? I embrace it. And having been around him from when we first met him on tour, me and KG, I, this is this. I'll tell you a little touch of what he done, just to show you how. Just 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 the little things you notice about someone's character. And it's you could say that don't mean anything, but you had to be there to appreciate it. We was in not the tunnel. We was. It was after the Dortmund game. It was after the Dortmund game, and we'd I'd, I'd finished talking to Benny McCarthy about just the boys and whatever, and then we walked, we followed him. That we followed him. Well, he left, and we followed the bit where the players would walk by because you just that's on tour. It's a little bit more relaxed. You can do that. And um, Andre was walking past, and he said hello to me and KG, like saying, hey, "How you doing, boys?" Like whatever. And Josh was, you know what? Josh is like he's got the camera on him. He's he's doing shit all the time. Josh had his back to Andre and Anna. With his with his camera gear, and Andre and Arne, instead of just like saying hello to me and KJ and just walking off, like Josh couldn't see him, so he like tapped him on the shoulder. So Josh physically had to turn around, say, "Bro, how you doing, man?" Like, and I remember walking. Me and KJ went, "Bro, he's just so blessed." Like, he didn't have to do that because, and some people can think, well, "Well, that's not that bit deep." But when you're around footballers, you see it's their job in it. They don't have to do certain things just to, just to be a decent person because sometimes they're fed up, they're tired. I mean. And he just he just had it. And then every time we spoke to him since that in general, he always comes over to say hello. He always comes to, you know, bless us up and that and, and say something. Even if it's not an interview, just you know, off camera or whatever. Oh, he's got that character. He's got he's got the characteristics. I give I give him that. I give him that. And it's really good to see that he's he's turned it round. And he's and he's, you know, he's not being memed every week as this, you know, awful buy flop of the season. Because that's another thing. In the first sort of six weeks from or from January from August when the season started to like up to December mm -hmm. when you get into Christmas, you're going, right, who's flop of the season so far? Right, who's the where's the money been spent badly? And at the beginning it was him, Havertz, um Yeah, and know, it's, it's funny, season, isn't other it? people in there, it's you know funny. what I mean? With that, because um, and that narrative sticks longer than sometimes it should. Because I, I honestly, now if they did those like flop of the season now, people that don't watch United every single week, they'd still put Onana in that thing, wouldn't they? They go, oh, no, no, flop, and you go, 
no, he's been one of our best players, like the second half of the season, yes. certainly. Yes. And look, there's a there's a way to go, and you can still point to the Champions League and go, look, the fact that we're not in the Champions League anymore in these sort of latter stages, or certainly through to the group stage, a lot of that was on Andre Onana's shoulders. Not all of it, but a lot of it, because he was making a mistake nearly every game, and he has to make up from that. But he's doing his best in trying to do it. And um, we talked a lot about, you know, the system and, and tactics last night, didn't we? And the setup of United. And you do look at it and say, well, if he was just getting a bit more protection um, with not having to have all of these shots faced and we were just more composed on the ball and he could really play to his strengths because we're not, we're still not playing to his strengths. His strengths are what we saw in that Champions League final last season, which is, you know, playing out from the back, can spray the ball over the place. People can receive the ball. He can make passes into the midfield where people can control it and pass it off to fullbacks, uh, strikers, wide players, whatever. And he can't do that. I mean, the the sort of the extent of his passing, really, that we're seeing now is long balls. He's having to, he's better at kicking it long than De Gea was because De Gea would just kick it into space. At least with Oman, yeah. there's a bit of precision. It hits, he yeah, can, and with both feet as well. He's really, yeah, exactly. Foot, like, he's just equally, really. Exactly. Good but that's kind of the real gist of it. I mean, maybe, you know, sometimes when we do that kind of playing up from the back, but it's very slow and there's no press on us, we can do that and he's calm with it. But um, mm. we're still not playing to his strengths and he's having to. Uh, but that means he's having to adapt, and he has adapted very well in the second half of the season. So um, absolutely deserves uh, deserves credit for that. Yeah, he does. Long may it continue. Um, Super chat here as we as we close out. Uh, Danny Defeater says, um, "I've had a raging headache since listening to Marcel Waffling yesterday. I did perk up though when he said Brentford had uh, a heavy flow." <laughs> yeah, big up to Marcel. I hope your hope your headache's gone as well, Danny. I had a headache. Um, yes, big up to all. Big up to Nubian Pharaoh. Big up to Aaron Orr. Big up to WJ Barrett, um, big up to the VK of all put chats in and Danny Defeat. Big up to everyone in the comments section who's been getting involved in the live chat. Big up to all the members who've been talking in there as well. Big up all the mods, moderating as perfect as, as usual. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll see you all again today, 6, 7 p.m. It's 7 been on the sidebar, the whole show, Flex, yeah, 7 Flex PM. and KG yeah. show, 7 mm. p.m. Yes, not 6, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Give it an extra bit of time to get your dinner down. Sit yeah. down, relax, you know, chill out. So it's going to be 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So, yes, Flex and KG show 7 p.m. today. Go. Check there. it out. If anything, right there, right there, right, right, right there, right there. If anything else changes uh, during the day, i.e. breaking news, we shall let you know. We shall let you know. Um, but until then, we will... Oh, also... I am going to film some uh, previews and uh, Chelsea Ooh. content with Ooh. one Ma, with one Mattis. Yeah. So, yes. Just before I go, guys, mm. I need you on this. Do With this thing with Matisse, do you Don't want, you dare. Don't you dare, Flex. Don't, don't, don't cower. Strong... Don't cower. Oh, don't cower. So, we're going to no. beat you. You're They're shit. Chelsea. No... They're Chelsea. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's one yeah. thing to do that in a team that we know is like a lot better than us, but Chelsea ain't better than us. Like they're not. Okay. So uh, they're, they're not, not. But do I run the risk of then fucking? Oh, mate. Who cares? Chelsea. Not you doing it. They're not. They're, <laughs> they're not that one. Like Matisse. Matisse has given up trying to talk with Chester. Yeah? I can't remember yeah, the last true. time I ever saw him do it because he knows. Even he doesn't believe it anymore. At least we're our criticism is there is an element of belief because we have seen parts where we go, actually, you know, we could play yeah, well yeah, there. Yeah. He's got no belief anymore. So don't allow him. To try and, me. Don't even allow. I made the mistake, was it last year? I did a combined 11 with him last year and he got way more players in that team than he should. And oh. to this day, I'm still furious no. about it. I'm still yeah, absolutely yeah, furious yeah. about it. So you put him in the ground, Flex, okay? Put him in. Oh, oh. heard, heard loud. It put him in the ground. All right, cool. Chelsea are crap flex. No, flex come with the Liverpool energy, bro. Mano's there in the mud. El Mudico. That's what I'm saying. Because he's going to bill it as like with your shit too. We're the same. And, I, and it's about but separating we're that out. We're not. Say we are not no, the same. Not. No, we, we are, are not, not the same. same. We are not the same as Chelsea. Don't even start that. Like, oh, yeah. Chelsea project, blah, blah, blah. Our, yeah. our new minority owners, yeah, they're not doing like, let's take it in turns in terms yeah. of running the club. They're not, we're not yeah. doing that. We're not buying all of these young players. I, they're going to get rid of, uh, was it Reese James and uh, someone else in the summer? They're captain, homegrown player. Why? Because they've got to sell people because they're in financial trouble. What, they, what is that one of the, the rumours? They're going to get rid of Reese yeah. James? Yeah. Uh, Castle's well, times. 
No. Well, that more so the uh, the every summer they look towards their team and go, "Who's homegrown?" Because we've got to, <laughs> we've got to sell some people. Mm. I'm not having it. I'm not mm. having it. Yeah. Well, that confirms what I you know more wanted to go down. Like, maybe not as strong as Liverpool, but I definitely weren't going to just be like, oh, "I don't know if we're going to." I was going to say we're going to beat them, but someone said Liverpool energy. So yeah. But the thing is, I've got another game before I see them all, so I won't even get to really brag. So there's not really much point, but. He'll get put in his place for sure. Um, all right, guys, we'll see you then. Uh, those previews will be out over the next couple of days as well. Um, probably, uh, well, yeah, Wednesday and maybe tomorrow, tomorrow. as well. So, yeah. Oh, that's tomorrow. Shit. Tomorrow. Yeah, my God, games Wednesday. in two days. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Take care, guys. We're out of here. Peace.